Good morning, everyone. So uh, today we will be discussing uh, the applications of GIS, where we will be seeing that in different uh, areas uh, how GIS being uh, you know implemented. So let's start. So here we will be covering the introduction, basic introduction of GIS, then capabilities and modules of GIS. GIS applications, conclusion, and then the references. As you all know, uh, many times we have discussed that GIS is a study uh, which used to input, store, retrieve, manipulate, analyze, and output geographically referenced data or the geospatial data in order to support different kinds of decision-making tools and uh, uh, these decision makings are uh, helpful in different kinds of planning and management of, uh, you know, different land use, land covers, natural resources, natural disasters, uh, the maybe utility and facility mappings, uh, various activities related to the environmental uh, management, etc. So uh, we have also discussed about the different uh, components of GIS where we need for these kind of uh, you know uh, plannings which we do with the help of uh, GIS various skilled people softwares hardwares data sets approaches etc then uh, what is GIS GIS maybe uh, is a uh, you know platform where we uh, go for uh, storing in, uh, retrieving inputting manipulating analyzing output related um, uh, to the you know geographically representation of different data sets so where there we are talking about the integration of different spatial and non spatial data sets with the help of different softwares hardwares etc now uh, in case of uh, gis database we go for the creation of different uh, uh, frameworks of data where we can go for the creation of different uh, uh, layers as far as their uh, you know uh, uh, characteristics are concerned uh, maybe different uh, theme based players where we can talk about uh, transport uh, water soil uh, uh, you know land use land cover transportation etc other than that in case of the framework of data, we can go for the collaboration of different uh, satellite data imageries, aerial data sets, elevation related, uh, you know, images, uh, then different uh, geodetic controls, boundaries of different areas, water related, uh, you know, frameworks. So we can uh, have a lot many information plotted together on a GIS platform. And then we can go for the, you know, uh, these uh, uh, data uh, generation in the form of different data sources, uh, uh, you know, different uh, database creation, which are related to these uh, the information or the storage of, uh, you know, these different layers or different uh, themes. We can, uh, you know, categorize these uh, data into raster or vector formats in case of raster we are talking about these imageries elevation data etc in case of uh, vectors we are talking about these uh, you know informations which we are storing into different uh, point line polygon features which we have studied in our previous lectures also then the capabilities of gis and the modulations of gis when we are talking about the capabilities, we are talking about, uh, you know, uh, uh, the various capabilities which we are discussing from uh, many of our last classes you have studied that uh, it has a power of integration, it has a, a power of uh, digitizing. Yes, although there are some errors, we can, uh, you know, we can uh, go for the rectification of those errors uh, with a few methods. Okay, so what are the capabilities of GIS that we are trying to, uh, you know, uh, uh, brief and uh, 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 mainly what are those categories? We are trying to tell you in few categories. One is the data capturing and the inputting of various data sets in a single platform. Then 
the management related activities we can manage the data in a proper format proper way we can go for the manipulation of these data sets uh, or any kind of changes with time which took place with it with very uh, uh, you know a few uh, uh, methods and then we can also go for different kinds of analysis which uh, are consist of different queries related to the spatial or non spatial which are related to the buffering point in polygon point in overlay geo coding of those data sets and different kinds of network operations which you we have studied in our analysis you know data analysis part then we can also go for the different modelings of these data sets along with the uh, uh, you know displaying of these data sets in the form of different uh, you know uh, uh, maps uh, graphs and the reports okay then if you go through the application the first application came in the geological mapping and interpretation so different types of maps are used for different purposes and different maps can have many symbols like um, uh, shown in here if you talk about point features we have municipal water industrial water agriculture uh, you know gas oil tanks monitoring uh, related things that can be categorized in different point forms then we have different uh, uh, you know uh, uh, road networks or unclassified roads or uh, uh, different kinds of roads or uh, drainages which can be shown in this uh, line feature then we have also line uh, polygon features so different types of maps are used for different purposes and different maps can have many symbols or many or uh, only one symbol depending on what one is trying to show the maps might use nominal data may be categorical which you have studied in the representation of data that the data can be of nominal categorical ordinal or uh, numeric data okay so it can have uh, any of the category then the example of these categories are for so i have tried to give you some uh, examples of point line and polygon features then the ordinal data are those which are grouped according to the rank to some quantitative information the data must be represented by the unique values of maps and colors okay so every color is denoting uh, some or other features for example if you see here then the pink color it is showing the plateau areas uh then uh, different symbologies are showing different uh, features so that is known as the legion of a particular uh, you know phenomena or a particular feature then numeric data are those uh, which represent a con continuous phenomena that fall along a regularly spaced interval for example we are talking about rainfall elevations populations etc which have a regular rainfall maybe uh, 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 in 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 uh, district there is a 0 to 1 uh, uh, 10 mm rainfall areas 10 to 20 20 to 30 so we have a regular interval data okay so uh, uh, by this figure uh, we are trying to show you the different uh, uh, you know um, uh, classes of uh, data sets which we are trying to uh, show by different uh, you know uh, techniques the one uh, is the normalized method where the bigger when uh, um, uh, polygon will be showing the higher uh, populated areas and lower or the smaller uh, circle will be uh, denoting for the uh, you know small population areas then the dot the intensity of dots showing the areas are having high population density as compared to the areas which are having less number of dots then we have the third method in which we can uh, show the uh, you know chart uh, in a particular that how much population is under how much class 
through pi diagram we are trying to show for each and every parcel of the country then in case of raster data uh, we have a thematic raster or image raster okay in case of thematic raster we have two classes and in case of image raster we have two classes one is discrete and continuous in case of thematic data sets in case of uh, discrete under thematic data it uses the unique value of classification for example geological maps okay so unique color is being opted to show a discrete or a different class of different geology okay in some place maybe uh, one kind of geological feature can be found in another class maybe some other class then we have the continuous uh, uh, you know thematic raster data so it can be classified into two things one is classified continuous data and the other one is trashed continuous data in case of classified uh, data continuous data the values are divided into classes and the classes are given different color for example 0 to 10 may be having a uh, red color and may uh, 10 to 20 may be having a uh, green color so based on the class of a particular values uh, the colors may assign to that particular class in case of stretch data the value is uh, you know scale uh, from 1 to uh, maybe 250 or 256 colors based on the data how much bit that data is having okay so based on the uh, lowest and the highest value the values are scaled and then we have the image raster okay data it it can be shown in two um, uh, classes one is your uh, stretched and the other one is the composed okay now in case of stretched it applied to a single band width images uh, ranging in a scale of gray okay so we have black to white values uh, having a proper scale based on their uh, you know intensities of color now in composed it varies value from 0 to 255 as per the band width okay so these are the different classes through which we can show this raster data sets then uh, this is the you know stretching values for the uh, you know uh, different images in case of uh, uh, stretched green bandwidth or the red green and uh, bleak blue composite maps in a single band and in multiple bands this is how a raster data is being shown now the second application it is in the field of mining and mineral exploration so gis plays very important role in uh, mining and exploration of different minerals okay the two important contributions of gis in the area of mining and mineral is the you know time management and the cost benefits okay so how time management because we can combine the data and database from different sources with easily um, uh, available you know techniques we can com combine many layers with the fraction of times we can also incorporate the uh, historical data which is already with the geological survey of india's record okay we can incorporate those historical data sets with the newer data sets which we are creating very in a very easy uh, way then we can also link directly from the modeling softwares to database of resulting ensuring the most recent sa information from analytic testing okay so because we are able to uh you know link 
different modeling software with the different kinds of data sets and we can have different analysis and we can test also those uh, analytics with the ground realities so that is again the efficiency which with less timings we can go for then we can also go for the quickly and easily 3d resource um, one is exploring from historical and modern drill hole data stored in the database so we can easily go for the different kinds of 3d modeling for different resources okay on the basis of which we can plan for the drillings and holes etc that information can be also stored for different kinds of plannings so with the very less time we can uh, go for these kind of analysis where we can uh, be benefit with the losing of time uh, that kind of things then we can have the cost effectiveness by using different kinds of gis techniques the less span power or hours are uh, you know spent in digitizing in uh, corporate the data into models then there are variety of gis analysis methods uh, 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 on quantitative uh, and raster data for enormous areas okay so because gis of uh, where we are using different kinds of imageries so in a one go we can have a synoptic view of the complete area so different analysis and different uh, uh, you know techniques or models can be applied and then um, we can plan go for different kinds of plannings in a single go go and we can plan for different activities then we can also uh, go for the old data of different types can be captured and view in a analytical layers okay so uh, multiple layers or multiple uh, you know uh, uh, parameters which influence the different kinds of mineral exploration activities so that can be um, uh, you know um, overlaid together and we can have different kinds of analysis done then it has a ability to free historical and modern data uh, in current projects okay so we can incorporate the uh, previous uh, historical data sets and the more modern data sets on the same platform and then we can go for the current studies also so these are the uh, two unique uh, properties which can be um, you know used as a very important contributor uh, of gis uh, while we are uh, able to go for the efficient uh, way the time management and the cost management as well in different kinds of mineral and mining activities then uh, after this the gis uh, in you know different kinds of mineral exploration encourage more efficient use of already existing data sets which is cost effective okay and then exploration cost are rising exploration drilling can be very expensive rate of discovery of large world ore bodies uh, is decreasing however analyzing the existing data both modern and historical uh, through 3d modeling allows the more targeted and cost effective drilling operations so i told you in the in the previous point also that by clubbing the historical information about the uh, you know uh, drilling points and the recent informations uh, by plotting them on the 3d modeling we can uh plan for our targeted areas uh with less time and less manpower uh and then yes of course we can go for the cost effective drilling operations also okay so uh after that the pipelines electric lines roads ramps and other mining facilities can be changed frequently and then we uh, the engineers and operation staffs use gis for 
facility mapping also after man mining also we need to go for the uh, you know uh, utilization of those areas so if we have uh, you know eia or those kind of things done uh, at prior manner then we can go for the uh, you know utility and uh, this facility mapping in proper way uh, using these gis and uh, remote sensing tools okay then engineers and operator staff uh, use uh, of gis for facility mapping applications and then the mining uh, areas uh, different facilities can be uh, you know managed in proper way with the help of gis that where the pipeline has to be spreaded where the electric lines we need to uh, put and then uh, how roads can be planned in that particular mining areas uh, how different kinds of mining facilities can be circulated on that particular area with the gis it is very easy to demarcate with less amount of uh, you know time consuming we can come up a plan with a plan that where the mining uh, or the drilling operation has to be done after uh, the drilling or mining uh, what has to be planned for the better management of those uh, mining areas and how different utilities and facilities can be planned so that each and every staff can use those utilities and facilities in proper manner then keeping a track of existing infrastructure and integrated it with the uh, you know mine plan and and the uh, how it can we can you know go for the future planning so of the mining areas that can be planned in a proper way by clubbing the historical and present data uh, and simulate for the upcoming uh, or future mining targets then gis can also be used to integrate the recent survey data with the block models for uh, mine design data and uh, different kinds of mining software packages uh, can be used for different kinds of mining visualization systems okay so these are the different applications or in the area of mining where we have studied that this is time and cost effective other than that uh, we can plan for uh, you know different utility facility mapping we can plan for different uh, mining and drilling areas and how can we uh, you know go for the better uh, management and planning of those areas so that each and every staff each and every people who are residing in and around those mining areas can be benefited with the different utilities and facilities uh, which needs to be provided there and then how different mining hazard can be uh, managed and how different kinds of mining visualization related activities can be performed by using these gis activities then the third application area which is very prominent in case of gis application is ground water exploration and water resource evaluation so gis in ground water management involves certain processes like uh, defining the issue then generate the strategies and incorporate the applications of gis so issues mandates and opportunities pertaining to the ground water management are the public education the non point source pollutant loadings the storm water management flood damage reductions surface water controls water quality assessment uh, open space watershed protection water supply management waste water management land development management aquatic habitat restoration so we have a huge application of uh, you know uh gis into the different ground water or different water resource related applications which include all these applications which i have told you right now so application analysis for soil impervious surfaces land use land cover water recharge riparian areas open space these are also the application areas of water where the gis can be applied 
the usual scale of uh, you know basins sub basins watershed sub watershed and micro and mi macro watersheds it can be applied on those areas also uh, the following informations can be derived by linking the soil data with the soil survey geographic databases related to the erodibilities of the uh, you know area agricultural capacity and the development of suitability of different septic temps uh, absorption fields lawns and landscaping dwellings and small commercial buildings so we have a huge scope of application into the different uh, applications of water resources where we are uh, on the one hand we are talking about the groundwater potential zones mapping on the other hand we are talking about the basin sub basin watershed micro watershed uh, zonation mappings and how we can go for the uh, you know water related development of these watersheds so um, how we can go for the you know the land use land cover uh, change with uh, reference to the groundwater recharge related uh, you know uh, problems how we can uh, you know restore the aquatic life of the um, uh, different water bodies how we can go for the different land development activities related to water supply management related to water um, uh, you know wastewater uh use how we can go for so these are the huge areas where we can apply the uh, role of G gis into uh you know better management and planning of these water resources now impervious surface estimation can be derived from land use land cover data the chart on the you know given uh, uh, uh ppt uh can be used to guide and develop the strategies for prevention restoration and management development on the level of impervious service okay so these kind of graphs or these kind of studies are helpful in uh, you know um developing the different kinds of preservation restoration and a uh, different level of impervious uh, surfaces then the land use land cover data can be used to calculate the change in uh, over a period of so different kinds of temporal studies related to the land use land cover changes uh, can be studied and based on those land use land cover we can uh, go for the planning of different groundwater recharge points into those uh, areas where we have uh, you know um, uh, urban expansion where we have these forested uh, expansion all those kind of things we can plan then riparian areas and open space then ground water recharge combined with the land use land cover soils precipitation uh, data to estimate the amount of ground water recharge in any area so we we can incorporate all these uh, you know datas with uh, uh, the uh, you know ground water recharge uh uh can be calculated in proper way and how uh to go for the different uh areas uh planning as far as the ground water recharging is concerned because in many areas of uh, you know urban this ground water recharge is a uh, uh problem because of everywhere there are uh, you know uh, concrete structures and the actual uh, uh, you know condition uh, the 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 drainage system that is being disturbed by this concrete structure and there is no way of uh, recharging that particular area so we have to go for the uh, you know recharge points at different levels to uh, stop the uh, uh, problem of groundwater recharging then riparian area data are created by combining a re relevant features into gis uh, data uh, set water adjacent west wetlands wetland transition flood prone areas adjacent hydraulic and alluvial soils then we can also go for the quantify uh, riparian areas areas of development removed using land use land cover then 
uh, we can also go for the visualization and prioritization of future open uh, space acquisitions uh, view of gis data that fit the specified objectives for acquisition with existing open source easement parcel data etc so water wetlands transition areas flood hazard areas forest steep slopes etc can be managed so what methodology as per the case study uh, we can go for uh, the use of integrated uh, water quality mapping the topographical data for rectification or creation of base map the satellite data uh, field data and the existing data which is available with the different forest or uh, the water resource departments then digital image processing of satellite data can be done field data as a ground water sampling points and chemical analysis can be done and based on all these data sets we can go for gis and thematic map generation and we can have a uh, different spatial analysis for drinking water a uh, spatial analysis from groundwater quality maps and we can go for the different analysis for the irrigation water also based on these gis different map generations then uh, the environmental analysis related problems can also be uh, you know uh, taken care with the help of gis where we are um into the accumulation uh, of different informations pertaining to the environment and we are able to understand the environmental processes and their linkages so the main objective is to gather the information pertaining to the different environmental phenomena and processes and gain an understanding and insight about different environmental studies so you can see here we are uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, uh, storing the different uh, real world features in different themes which includes the hydrological uh, mapping type topographical land use land cover different utility and facilities mappings soil streets districts and different parcels of land so all these layers as per your need you can go for the digitization or the creation of these layers and then we can uh, uh, by processing these the data sets we can develop an understanding and insight about different uh, you know environmental phenomena and uh, we can go for the planning of different environmental strategies so environmental uh, problems are special problems so uh, environmental data can all uh, almost uh, always be geo referenced and therefore gis serve as a tool for the environmental analysis we can go for the analysis of different uh, you know spatial relationships among different features uh, the different patterns they are having different geographic processes they are having biological and different phenomena are Uh, having different features are having so based on these um, studies we can uh, go for different kinds of um, uh, environmental analysis or we can have an insight about the different uh, environmental problems which reveals the different uh, um, management options to control different uh, environmental problems through the interpolation the temporal analysis and 3d analysis of these uh, you know features then we can also plan for the disaster management activities where we can go for the prediction prevention preparedness mitigation then the emergency management and rescue and finally the disaster recovery and rehabilitation so all these things can be performed in better way so that it can uh, we can you know go for better planning as far as the uh, disaster management is concerned so disaster management are unpredictable extreme special events in natural or man made environment we have both the types of environment uh, disasters which you have studied in your previous semesters also which includes majorly the natural and man made Uh, environments so disasters 
uh, cannot be foreseen, but it can be dealt in such a way so that it, we can, you know, reduce the impact of these disaster to great extent by, uh, you know, uh, uh, different levels of planning. If you uh, have, if we have better production uh, prediction uh, uh, tools, we can stop at the very initial stage the uh, the you know uh, uh, the disaster of those uh, particular events. How? Because at, if we are able to predict those uh, disasters, the, uh, that there are chances of earthquake, there are chances of uh, uh, forest fire in the month of May. So we are able to tell the people who are residing uh, there, uh, they should be aware during those periods. They should uh, either, uh, if they, there are, uh, you know, chances of flooding near the river bank. So if we are able to predict that there may be chances of heavy floodings during uh, the month of July, Okay, so we can uh, uh, aware those people that you should vac uh, vacate those places during that time. So if we are able to predict the disaster in proper manner, so prevention and preparedness can be done to stop the losses as far as the economic, as far as the life uh, of people uh, is concerned. Okay, then any disaster management activity will have these six phases, which are related to the prediction. If prediction fails, prevention, preparedness, mitigation, emergency rescue, kya honge, and then what can be the recovery and rehabilitation after the disaster. Okay, so these six phases, then any rescue management will involve locating the sites, okay, uh, reducing the critical time uh, element, involve the activities, accurate data about the uh, resources available in that particular place, accessibility, what can be the uh, uh, sources of, you know, commuting one place to another place, correct means of allowing resources and real time visualization of the problem and the area of interest. Then advantages of GIS, it is useful tool in locating the sites of accidents become very simple and accurate the accessibility of uh, you know various features which are related to the roads and uh, different other communicating routes is concerned uh, can be analyzed in better way in a uh, synoptic view finding out the resources became very simple speedy and accurate then we can also find out the optimum routes between different resources locating to accidental sites. It also helps in topographic and demographic analysis, uh, which is very important tool in any kind of planning and implementation of different activities. Then it provides a buffer analysis to facilitate and dynamic planning. And then, uh, yes, of course, uh, we can also go for the efficient management as the spatial and non-spatial data can be um, integrated and individual database we can come up with the uh, for the different management strategies then the transport system uh, we have uh, the role of uh, gis in different kinds of transportation uh, activities which is also called as gis3 okay so gis3 is currently based on the, broadly the transportation analysts and decision makers in different transportation planning and engineering from uh, you know infrastructure planning design management traffic safety analysis and transport impact analysis public transit planning operations and intelligence transport systems planning these kind of things are planned under GIST which is also known as geographic information system for transportation then uh, the GIS T can be further categorized into three subcategories GIS T data representation, GIS T analysis modeling, and application. So, um, in, in, in first stage, we are uh, looking for different data which can be represented through GIS uh, data. 
and then different kinds of analysis which are related to the root analysis or other modeling techniques can be implemented uh, to integrate different uh, uh, you know uh, datas which are related to the transport and uh, it helps in the various kind of uh, uh, you know transportation applications then we can plan for the uh you know um, finally with the application of gist we can plan for good foundation of supporting of many gis transportation activities uh, which are related to the safety and security of uh, uh, different uh, transportation networks so this is uh, the different transport network can be plan uh, you know planned for uh, route analysis for shortest path analysis uh, for uh, having traffic load related ex activities you most of the time while you are uh, you know listening to the different uh, uh, you know radio stations there you will be finding different rjs they will be saying ki in this time the uh, uh, you know civil lines in jaipur they that will be having a peak hour or uh, that babu bazar it will be having peak hour of transport uh, this traffic jam during this time so how we can go for these analysis based on different transport networking modeling okay so uh, these are the different uh, applications of uh, the gist where we can plan for these kind of activities related to the transport okay and the gist application is in the uh, marketing area trade analysis customer profiling urban areas risk analysis of different uh, you know accident road accidents then sales management based on different routes we can go for so these are the different application areas of transportation then we can also plan for different kinds of demographic analysis uh which i think we will be discussing in our next lecture so rest of the applications we will be discussing in our next lecture uh so till now we have uh, studied the transport uh, or the role of uh, you know gis in transport system role of gis in disaster management role of gis in different kinds of environmental analysis role of gis in different kinds of ground water exploration and water resource evolutions then we have also studied the role of gis in different kinds of mining and mineral exploration activities and then we have also studied the role of gis in uh, you know general uh, data representation and data integration so with this i will be ending my today's talk and uh, you all may appear for your uh, test okay uh, in uh, your lms if you have any queries they are welcome you can mail me you can ask me in next class thank you so much